Welcome everybody to another edition of Amplify Your Business. Today we're going to be talking about the business of music and my guest today is Dave Von Beaker. Now Dave has been doing some really interesting things through COVID as a musician and uh, I think we're going to start there but first Dave say hi to the crowd and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Hello so yeah I'm a, I'm a singer-songwriter here in Edmonton and uh, I've been doing that for a number of years um, kind of rebranded myself just under my my last name as Von Beaker about five years ago and started releasing uh, new music and kind of um, wearing bow ties, doing fun things like that to kind of establish a brand. And um, yeah, it's been going well and uh, was just kind of starting, you know, that it, there's a kind of a slow, there's a slower trajectory to uh, becoming known as a musician than I probably would have um, signed on for had I known it at first. Um, yeah. So I've adjusted adjusted my timelines of, of, of how things are going, but uh it's also, I was gaining a lot of momentum kind of right before the, the pandemic hit as far as bookings out, out of town and some bigger shows and things like that. That was really exciting. And then, of course, that all uh, kind of went on hold. So I have had, um, you know, bookings that seemed like they were going to happen forever ago now push back a whole nother year into 2022 and whatever else. So it's um, it's been a wild time, but uh, but I'm happy to be doing something that I can still do on some level from from home. So... Yeah, it's it's been an interesting ride for musicians, right? Because um, unlike um, a, a lot of other industries, you guys were basically shut right down in terms of what your business model was. And, and maybe walk me through that a little bit, uh, because the music industry has been changing quite a bit for quite some time now, um, yeah. in which um, you uh, really live gigs were the place where you were making your money as opposed to the recordings or if you understand that correctly yeah yeah so the the revenue streams for a musician have changed a lot over the last you know probably 10 to 20 years it's it's yeah. funny because um they really i don't think there really was a golden age where as a as a musician um you know, even a lot of the biggest musicians that you would know about weren't necessarily making great money either when they were working with labels and things like that because the agreements that they had were so, mm. you know, in, in the old system, you would kind of get loaned a whole big chunk of money to make an album and make a bunch of music videos and all the things you have to do to look professional and like a like a rock star. And then you would be forced to basically hit the road for hundreds of days a year for the next however many years to, to hustle that and earn that money back. And, uh, and, and I've heard stories of people that, you know, had to keep making albums under contract because they didn't make the money back off of the first album. And basically it was, uh, that was a loan. So they're, they're kind of, you know, it looks great. It looked great from the outside, but, but a lot of times the uh, artists had no control over, what they were allowed to do or, or what they had to do and they weren't making any money from it. So I don't know that, you know, I don't know that things are necessarily worse now than they were actually. Mm. Um, because the, the, obviously with the internet and streaming and everything, the, the access to fans is so much better now than it's ever been. I mean, I can put up music, uh, I could record a song this afternoon, put it up and it would be probably on Spotify tomorrow. Um, yeah. And, but that doesn't mean anyone's going to listen to it or know that it's there. Right. So it's, yeah, yeah it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because you, at the same time, it's easier for you to do that, but it's also easier for everybody else. And so the volume's a lot higher. You have more competition than two. Oh, it's crazy. I don't remember the stat, but I was just watching a webinar where they, where they were talking about how much music is uploaded, uploaded to Spotify every day. It's, you know, in, it's at least in the tens of thousands, but it might even be, I know it, it's, I want to say it's 60 some thousand songs every day yeah. um, that are uploaded, but um, it could be much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. You've got, yeah. You, yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you stand out in that? Right. Yeah. So anyway, back to what you were saying, um, you know, those streams don't necessarily, uh, they don't, they don't net you very much money. So, so a lot of, you know, what we were doing was, getting paid to play live shows. Uh, and at those live shows, we could also, sometimes there'd be tips on top of that. Sometimes we could sell, uh, sell a lot of merch or sell physical, believe it or not, we still sell physical 
CDs even. I don't yeah. think anybody listens to them, but we still sell them. It's like a, <laughs> it's become a, it's actually become like a piece of memorabilia, I guess, more yeah. than a, you know, more than a functional item, which is fine. Well, and the, um, and the artwork too, I suppose, right. It's still a collector's thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's still, it's a tangible way to, to show an artist uh, that you believe in the work that they're making. Right. So it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a weird transaction that way, but I think it still has value for people. Um, yeah, and then the other kind of couple of, uh, not every musician is a touring musician that makes their money that way, but if you if you don't do that, it is pretty hard to make uh, your money just from selling your music. That as a product, it's become so commodified that the value is is just um, really flat line for, for the, just the raw file of the music, right? Yeah. Um, so then there's, you know, there's some revenue streams like either licensing songs for film, TV, ads, that sort of thing. Um, that's become a big thing for a lot of musicians. It's something that I would love to get into, but it's a whole nother world. So I'm not, haven't done that yet. Uh, and then, you know, I've, I've been doing like some music for uh, intro themes and stuff for podcasts or oh, yeah. music for video or different things like that. So there are some other you know, as a songwriter or composer, there are some other revenue streams that you have access to. But for a lot of us, our main one was was playing live shows. And obviously, that's as of today still not happening. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite the, the shift. And so now one of the things that when that happened, you were looking around the landscape, and, and you decided that you wanted to help out other um, musicians uh, with their streaming and so on. So talk a to us a little bit about YAG Streams, which was an initiative that you started right at the start of the pandemic, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, part of my, you know, both my professional background and and a kind of a side skill set I've had to develop as an artist, um, so I don't have to pay someone else to do it, is doing you know web design and and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. so um, one, I had some knowledge about that and. I thought pretty early on in the pandemic, I saw a lot of my friends, um, you know, just random notifications would come up on uh, Facebook or on Instagram or over email that, hey, I'm going live at this time or or whatever. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of people, this would have been about a year ago, um, last March, it's when we started, and then especially April, May, June, there were just so many people streaming. It was, you know, all the time. And yeah. I found it surprisingly difficult to find out who was you know if i wanted to say okay it's thursday i want to watch a live stream tonight of music because i can't go out and see live music um who's playing so it's a pretty simple question um wh which local musician can i support today by watching their live stream uh it was actually really difficult to answer that question <laughs> um because you'd have to you know, piece together all these kind of different sources of information and it was pretty incomplete. And, um, and then some people were kind of just, just going live off the cuff and not even, not even promoting it at all. So, yeah. um, I thought we could just collectively probably do a better job of that. Um, I threw, so I threw together, it was pretty wonky. The initial version, it was like a Squarespace, website because I could set that up really quickly. I think I threw threw the whole site together in about four hours. Yeah. And uh, by the end of March, you know, we went into to lockdown. I remember I played a gig March 14th, was, which was like, even on that day, it was like, are we still going to do this gig? Is it going to get canceled? Yeah. Um, and then, that, then like right after that, everything was just hard lockdown. So yeah. So it was by March 30th, I think, by the end of the month that Yeg Streams first went live in that initial version. Cool. And so, yeah, so you you created this website, uh, started listing all of the different live streaming events that were coming up uh, from musicians. And I'd imagine it crafted some mechanism where people could submit the, theirs or their information or upload it themselves or whatever. Yeah. Th I mean, that was one of the difficulties with, with Squarespace initially is... Um, they had kind of a calendar integration built in, but there was no mechanism for submissions. So I was just scraping, just going, you know, anywhere I could think to go. Um, uh, you know, Facebook events, learning how to 
how to filter those searches so I can try and find try and find every event that's listed somewhere in the bowels of Facebook <laughs> uh, that's related. And then you know CKUA has some online events listed. And there are a few other places that had um, event listings. So I was just trying to kind of gather as much as I could, which was a ton of work. Yeah. Um, because you know it's one of those one of those things where if you do it right the first time, it saves you a lot of time later. Yeah, but you don't always have that luxury in a in a pivot, right? Where you're trying to get something going as quick as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that initial version there was really no mech. I think I probably just had an email, you know. Yeah. <laughs> email me your event. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it worked. So it was simple, but it worked. Yeah, and and so then people started submitting uh, once you get that functionality worked out, and uh, this became then a destination for people who wanted to watch live streams and figure out what to watch on Thursday. And so that was really successful. Uh, but this was never intended to be another line of business for yourself. It was meant to um, serve the purpose of helping other uh, musicians then get the word out and, and totally really increase that support where musicians were, like we said at the outset, so, so hard hit to begin with. Um, so then as things evolve, I understand now you are winding it down or have wound down uh, Yag streams. We're not out of the pandemic yet. Live performances aren't happening yet. Um, is there a reason why you decided to start to transition that um, into a, a different form then? Yeah, yeah. Um, it actually has very little to do with um, coming out of the pandemic, obviously, because they're, you know, we're not there yet. Um, and it, more to do with just the amount of kind of investment of time, um, manpower that was needed. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an incredibly, it, it wasn't a crazy amount of work, but it was a few hours every week. And, um, you know, you'd start to notice that's eating into this thing I'm trying to do. That's eating into this thing I'm trying to do. And, yeah. um, I have a, my first, another thing I was doing during the pandemic was recording my first full length album. Okay. So I felt like, I need to be making sure I'm giving time to my actual career as well. <laughs> okay, so Dave, with the uh, Yag streams then winding down, um, what's uh, occupying your time these days then? Yeah, well, I'm I'm uh, I spent a lot of the time in in pandemic um, learning how to record my music better, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, um, I've been working on trying to get out a, a full album since I started this journey. So. Um, that's a very expensive prospect normally, <laughs> but uh, but because I couldn't do a lot of the the normal ways that you would make an album in this time, I decided to just make you know the album that I could make this year and and still try and push something out. So, what I had time to do was learn how to record things myself a little better and uh, and and kind of invest in that set of songs. So I have I do have my first album coming out Excellent. at the end of June. Congratulations. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I'm super excited. It feels like a, a big milestone for sure. So yeah, no, that's really exciting. And so how can people find the album then uh, at the end of June, you said? End of June. Yeah, it comes out June 25th. There's some singles out already on all the, the places and you can find all that at my website at vonbeaker.com. Okay. Um, and so for people, just so they know the spelling of that, it's Von Beaker with uh, spelled B-I-E-K-E-R, correct? B I E K E R, yeah, just like this. <laughs> hey, it's like okay, awesome. Uh, normally, when you put out an album, you do big show, big release show, and invite people to that, and that's where you would actually sell probably the majority of your albums. And then you sit on a box of them for another five years or whatever. <laughs> um, but you know, can't do that. So then, so then, what do we do? So I've I've kind of come up with two. Um, two ways to to get this album out into the world without that. Uh, one is a modified release tour that I'm doing called, uh, the album is called Long for This World. Uh, and the, the release tour is called Long for This Yard. So I'm doing a, a tour of yard shows uh, because oh, cool. small, small kind of intimate shows like that are, um, it was funny, like I had to put this out about a month or two ago. And so, you know, everything has a pandemic guarantee. I just said, if, if you book one of these shows and COVID makes it not possible then you know you get your deposit back and we'll just call it a day but yeah let's hope we can do this right so yeah um 
it looks like all of that's all of those are going to be possible now, which is fantastic. I was able to do some yard concerts um, kind of last summer fall when things were opened up a little bit more, and uh, and they were just so so beautiful. It's such a great amount of people. It's intimate. Um, people are really generous uh, at those events with tips and things like that. So that was that was a real boost for me. So I decided to really dig into that this year. So I've actually, I'm actually even making up tour T-shirts, uh, and anybody that books a spot stop on the tour gets their name and their neighborhood listed on the back of the tour T-shirt, just like you would get with like <laughs> very a, cool big tours. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited about that, um, and that's booking until June 18th because uh, I need time to make the shirts after that. So yeah. that's all at, at the website. And then the other thing is uh, I'm doing an online, I'm actually giving away the whole album for free online okay. um, through this 10 day experience I've been working on called Von Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So my album is all about like um, places, traveling, uh, a lot of physical places, some kind of emotional and spiritual places as well that have all had an impact on my life. So every kind of song on the album represents a different place. And uh, I thought it'd be really fun to invite people to come along with me on a journey through all those songs. So uh, so you can sign up again at vonbeaker.com and uh, it's totally free. And starting on June 15th, you'll start getting every track from the album one a day. Uh, for free. And also there's going to be um, kind of video walkthroughs for every song about, you know, w why I wrote it. Um, some of them about how I recorded it, because there's kind of some interesting sounds on some of the songs and some exclusive bonus content and things like that. And everybody that signs up gets a passport uh, that we kind of go through together, a Von Voyage passport. And there's a Facebook group that you become part of so we can kind of connect with all the other travelers, yeah. which has already started. It's been fun. We've been sharing uh, what seat we want to claim on the plane and <laughs> order and all that kind of stuff. I and then it. at the end, there's a, a release show on Zoom. Okay. So uh, I will be doing a big release show, but it's going to be on Zoom June 24th. And, uh, and anybody that's part of Von Voyage gets a ticket to that for free. So I think it's going to be a really fun uh, experience. Try and make it as community as possible, even though we yeah. can't be together necessarily in person. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I think what you're doing is just fantastic because of that community building aspect of it. You're letting people have a very unique experience. Uh, yeah. And I really like the play on the travel as well that the album is all about the places. Because I mean, that's one of the things that is probably one of the most significant losses that we've had besides just the personal interactions with family and friends has been this inability to, to travel. And so that's one of the things that everybody's talking about. And so you're taking people on this travel. So I think just timing wise, the concept, the idea, it's really, really on point. So good job with that. That's really great. Thanks, Lance. Yeah. I mean, I got lucky with that for sure. Um, <laughs> Cause a lot of these songs were, were already written even before the pandemic, but they yeah. all, everything took on new meaning, right? These last months, yeah. it's like, Oh, I'm thinking about this song in a totally different way now. So, yeah. So I love the way that you've pivoted and I know that you have um, talked to lots of different uh, musicians and I'm sure there's some things that entrepreneurs are going to be able to learn from um, some of the pivoting that uh, musicians did who are all entrepreneurs as well. Uh, so there's going to be some great lessons learned there, but maybe before we go to that, let's just uh, do a little song. I, I know you had got your guitar oh. close by. So yeah. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind uh, playing something either from the album or whatever you want. I, I think this might be the first time that we've had anybody play something live on our show. So this is uh, this is fantastic. Well, it shouldn't be the last time that you should require that all uh, artists, <laughs> all, all your guests sing you a song now, I think. Lance. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Tell them Von Beaker put, <laughs> threw, the, threw the challenge down. <laughs> so what are you um, going to play? Well, I'll play, uh, I'll play a song that's just like about two to three minutes, if that's okay. Sure. Because uh, from the album, um, and it's hard to just pick a part of a song. So this is a good quick one I can do for you. It's called uh, Haunted. Okay. And can you give us a little bit of the backstory on this one? Uh, yeah. So this this funny thing about this song is you can actually find this song on all the streaming and everything um, in two versions now because I've released the single. But this was actually one of the first songs that I ever recorded. Okay. Um, a few years ago and it's totally a totally different version so this uh it's kind of an imagined 
it's an imagined story. It didn't happen to me. Uh, <laughs> I had someone ask me about, you know, are you okay? What's this song about? And I was like, <laughs> it's totally made up, but it's kind of, uh, I mean, I think it's pretty clear from the lyrics, but it's, uh, it's kind of about missed opportunities. So, um, it's kind of one of those, um, it's about seeing somebody in a, in a, in a cafe and thinking there might be kind of a romantic spark there. And, uh, and what happens if you don't do anything about that? And okay. what do you, how do, how do you live with that? If always wondering kind of what might have happened, right? And I think that could be about a relationship, but it could be about, you know, any kind of opportunity that comes our way is you always have to, you never, I think the interesting thing in life is you never get to see, you don't get to live both lives. You only get yeah. to live one, right? And so the, the life unlived is always um, this big question, right? Yeah. So. Interesting. Okay, well, here's Dave Von Beaker of Von Beaker with Haunted. Oh, you know what? I got to turn on my my reverb for you. Sure. There, there we go. If I knew your name, I'd probably forget every other word. A mind can only hold so much beauty inside. At least that's what I've heard. And I don't want to find it out the hard way by myself. I just let someone else. You left with someone else. A moment open closed. You vanished like a ghost. I'm haunted. Yeah. If I could play the game, I'd probably protect my heart from every wound. I almost caught your name, it was written on your cup, but I was looking up. I don't want to admit it, but I know I stared too long. Your eyes were singing songs, I tried to sing along. But I forgot the tune, it echoes like a ghost, I'm haunted. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 Well, I've been coming here for just about a year, 6.30 on the clock. Watching over the spot, right where you last touched down, but you don't come around. No, you are not around anymore. If I knew your name, I'd probably forget every other word. Wow, that's awesome. Way to go. <laughs> Thanks, Lance. Proud to be the first musician on your show. <laughs> yeah, no, that was really, really good. The voice was fantastic. The audio is just so good. So obviously, yeah, you have been working on the live streaming capabilities there in your studio so this is this, that came through just brilliantly oh awesome yeah you know it's funny that's one of the things one of the big pivots i've had to do this year is just really um figure out how to get things to sound good because that's what that's one of the things i saw early on is you know the yeah. what the live streams i was watching were just all over the map some were sounded great and some sounded really bad yeah. and most of uh none of this technology is built for us um Zoom has gotten a lot better uh, with their original sound settings and they have some high fidelity audio settings. There's all these little under the hood things you got to do as a musician to, to make things sound good because these, <clears throat> by default, all, every one of these video uh, conferencing things that we use is designed to suppress background noise, right? Yeah. Which, is, which is great, except that it considers a guitar. If you're singing and playing at the same time, it, it's always... Uh, puts your voice to the top and everything else it squishes right yeah. so you get this weird like 
often you'll get this weird sound like you're underwater, like everything is just kind of swishing in and out, and that's the compression, like pushing that guitar down. So anyways, mm-hmm. had to figure that all out. But but um, because I did, I've been able to actually do some shows with... Uh, I, I played uh, some Christmas shows, for instance, for like a group in Berlin uh, and some other places in Europe. There was an office office party that hired me in Denver to do their office Christmas party. Nice. Um, and that's because the I think the quality level is is up there where it's like, oh, this actually sounds like a real show. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it did. It sounded fantastic. So the, probably the best that I've heard because I haven't listened to any um, any performances recently, uh, but definitely in the early days, I was doing doing quite a few streams uh, and involved in some events where we were putting on and we had some uh, musicians uh, provide some entertainment. Yeah, and it was just it was super subpar, uh, in terms of the sound. So yeah, this yeah. is a, this is really nice. So good job on that. Now Thanks, let's, man. let's, uh, let's dig into, uh, like I, I teased before we got to the song was, was with all the musicians that you interacted with, with Yag streams and what you're doing and the pivoting that you've made, which I, I just love the way that you're doing this launch. It's really cool. Um, so definitely the pandemic has created an opportunity is how the way that I would frame it for you to, to yeah. really focus on doing something unique and creating that experience. What else can we as, as fellow entrepreneurs who maybe aren't musicians learn from you, the musician industry or the music industry on uh, you know, the pivots that were made, the innovations, the creativity that you guys poured into uh, switching up the business model? Yeah, I, th- I think one of the biggest things for me, and I still encounter it even with other musicians is... Um, reframing kind of the changes that we've had to make as you know it, it's hard because we've had to make these changes for a really terrible reason right yeah. the pandemic is um i'm always hesitant in saying anything like oh the, here there's a silver lining from the pandemic or whatever yeah. right yeah because uh, we know what that means but it still feels weird to even say um so it's hard to like separate i think it can be hard to separate the changes in business model or the pivots we've made from the circumstances and so everything can kind of get painted like in this negative like oh i can't wait till i don't have to do live streams anymore i can just play i can play in person for instance um but i think instead it's like just like you said it's it's good to ask yourself like what opportunities has this presented and could those be opportunities that i think were like catalyzed by this event but they're not they're not um bound to it right so for instance, like I was saying, um, doing those Christmas shows for, for people in different parts of the world. I mean, every time I do a live stream, almost I've got people from, I, I play live on Facebook every Tuesday at 1230, just because it's, uh, I call it no tie Tuesdays. <laughs> I don't get, usually it's a lot of work cause I get dressed up. I actually have a whole setup on the wall. You can't see where I, I, I do a different thing for my music live streams visually. Um, but these are, this is just like, what is the thing I could pull off easily every week, right? So I just sit down in this chair, I play for half an hour and whatever. But uh, even on those, I have a guy uh, named Fritz who comes, He I don't know how he found me, but he's in Germany and he watches every week. And it's like 8.30 at night for him there. And he's, yeah. he always says, oh, I'm tuning in in the evening here in Germany. So, um, you know, for me, there's going to be, I'm going to continue to do streams strategically. I won't do them as, as probably uh, often as I've been doing them, but I'm going to continue to do them because how else can I, you know, go play in Germany or whatever. At this point in my career, it's not an option. So, <laughs> um, so that's been really good for me. And I think, you know, any business probably has, I think of like, um, you know, the restaurant industry and how often they've had to pivot back and forth and back and forth. And, and I know there's, um, a lot of restaurants that have never had a delivery option or, or any sort of online ordering option who have had to develop that now. Right. And I think it would be good instead of just like, and I'm sure they're already asking these themselves, these questions, but you know, instead of just turning off that tap and being like, let's just go back to what we were before. It's like, well, what is, what is how has the world actually changed and like what does a new way of being look like for us right yeah yeah and that's the reality of it is is that uh, you know the the business models for a lot of businesses are broken have been broken because of the pandemic and are going to stay 
broken in the sense that they're not going to necessarily return back to the same way that they were before. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the genie's kind of out of the bottle in terms of e-commerce, um, which was accelerating anyway, but I mean, it, it just totally took a huge jump through this. And, and so yeah. businesses who, you know, were not online, that didn't have a good digital presence, were forced all to do that. And if they negate maintaining that once we come out of the pandemic, they're going to suffer because of it for sure, I think. So um, the, the things have changed. And so, so yeah, so that's one, one lesson. Any other lessons that, uh, um, that you, you know, have observed that you think would apply to other businesses? Uh, I think the idea of collaboration mm -hmm. and um, how much that can add to what you're doing and how possible it is because of the new, because of the technologies we've kind of all um, discovered. Yeah. So, you know, for instance, like what we're doing right now, obviously we're doing this remotely, but it's, I think, become so easy to reach out to people. Um, there's a different perception of how far away everybody is. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I've always been a big, uh, I've had some of the best things in my life and my professional career happen by just asking questions of strangers, um, and assuming that, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen is I don't hear anything back or I hear a no, but, yeah. um, but there's possibility that there's a yes there. Right. So I think now what's changed is so many people that might have seemed a lot weirder to like reach out to somebody in your field who's doing something amazing uh, in Florida, for instance, or in Sweden, right? Yeah. It might have seemed like a weird ask to, to be like, well, why are you contacting me from Edmonton now with this this <laughs> question? Like why? I, I think the, the world has gotten a even a little smaller than it was before. Yeah. Uh, and it's not weird now to, to connect across... Um, you know, countries or continents even. So yep. I would say like, if there's, if there's uh, reaching out that you've kind of wanted to do, I, I mean, I think now is a better time than ever to just assume that a people are willing because they probably always were, but B they're also more comfortable with the technology that makes that possible. Yeah. So in my field, for instance, there were a couple of, a uh, couple of tracks on the album I was doing where I needed, um, I needed drums and you can see that I, I can play drums and I have, I have played and recorded my own drums, but I'm not, I'm not a drummer, so I'm not great. And I wanted, I wanted these to be great. So I was able to reach out, um, through some technology where we could do remote recording, where I could actually talk to the drummer in his studio and he's got, you know, multiple drums and all the microphones and everything set up. Cause that's what he does, right? That's his yeah. specialty. So instead of me trying to do everything myself, I was able to remotely connect with somebody that's really niche specialized in this one thing and uh it took about an hour and we were done it was like here's the song i think he played it once and I, i'm able to watch him and listen in real time and say oh that was really good but you know on the second chorus can you do this kind of a fill instead of that kind of fill then he did it the second time perfect he sends me the files we're done so I mean, it's actually a lot more efficient than any time I've done drums in a real studio showing up and waiting for things to be set up and whatever else and a lot cheaper. So I, I think, you know, that's, that's a music example, but I think in every field, there's probably an example like that where there's a, a specialization that someone has, someone has invested time over these last months to really set themselves up to do that well from home. Mm -hmm. So, um, all those investments aren't going to go away though. Like what they've set up is now going to outlast the pandemic. So tap into those professionals. I would say whatever your field is, there's just so many, so many freelancers and, and people doing different things that are really specialized that are, it's probably more accessible and more affordable than you might think. Yeah. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally does. Kind of vague. <laughs> yeah. Well, but. yeah, no, it totally makes sense. And, and the collaboration, just the desire to collaborate or willingness to collaborate. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that they probably were always willing to do that. It's just now the technology uh, comfort level is better. And, and I think that's a really good point is that anytime that I've asked uh, people, uh, you know, for things, for favors, for a collaboration, for, would you like to help out on this? I usually get a really great response, um, prior to, but, uh, now with the technology, it's just has enabled it to be so much easier, 
uh, to be done. And so I think that is an area that a lot of entrepreneurs should be considering um, looking around and, and trying to figure out, okay, well, I don't necessarily have to do everything or deliver every aspect of the service um, that I am offering to the public. Uh, there might be a way for me to collaborate and, and create something that's even going to be better. And like you said, uh, the quality was great uh, in your instance, um, probably better than what you could have got because you went to the best person that you knew of, which didn't happen to be maybe in the backyard uh, here in Edmonton. And so um, it allows you to increase the product quality at the same time as potentially reducing cost too. Yeah. So yeah, it's really good. Yeah, which is a big win for sure. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, one more thing that just popped to mind, I'd say is education. I, I guess mm -hmm. the two go hand in hand, but education and networking opportunities. I mean, there's so many... Yeah. Um, in my field, I know, but I'm sure in every field now, there's like a lot of the conferences and, and, um, you know, industry gatherings that would be happening, yep. uh, had to pivot and a lot of them went online. Right. So I was able to go to, to Folk Alliance International, which is a big, um, folk music conference. That's usually in New Orleans or Kansas city or some other place that I can't necessarily afford to get to, um, for a number of reasons this year it went online. So I was able to actually take that in for the first time this year because it was way more affordable and I didn't have to, tr I didn't have to leave home for a week or 10 days or whatever it would be. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I learned a lot of stuff, but I also met a lot of uh, new contacts and resources, right. That I've, and I've stayed in touch with some of them, which has been fantastic. So, um, I would be really curious kind of whatever field I'm in right now as, as to like what new uh, both educational and networking opportunities are accessible to me that weren't accessible to me a year ago just because yeah. they've changed their business model, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it has made the world so much smaller in that regard. And um, it is interesting actually on that note, just in terms, because I've, I've thought about this for the local people who are putting on conferences and training seminars and so on if that has actually created more challenges for them, because now instead of them, you know, uh, having a localized audience that uh, could easily access them, and therefore you kind of have this, this built-in lock-in that you have just because of geography and the cost to, to travel to these other competing conferences. Um, now all those other competing conferences that have maybe bigger name speakers and, and yeah. a lot more resources to throw at it, that they then become the ones in which the local guys are really struggling to compete against uh, to attract the attendees. Because now if I'm gonna spend my $200 on a registration ticket, do I you know, spend it locally or do I spend it um, on this multi-international you know, high profile event? And so, so it's a kind of a double-edged sword, depending on which side yep. of the fence you're on, on that one. But uh, yeah, in terms of, I think uh, us as entrepreneurs, us as, as people participating in individual um, industries, it makes a lot of sense for us to be extending that network to some of those virtual events that are happening in other places of the world. Yeah. And I would say, I think it, you're right. It totally is a double-edged sword, but I would also say if you're somebody who's locally minded if you're running an event like that um where that's a big part of what you do even if it's not physically local right now or if it's not going to continue to be physically local or if it's going to be some sort of hybrid going forward i think because just like we were saying with music because the because the playing field is so level it just means that there's so much more competition right yeah. but it's also easy i think to rise um to rise up in that competition with that same mentality that makes you a strong local presence because so much is, is now, I mean, like these, like your events, the, what you're talking about, when I went to, to Folk Alliance, my biggest fear was it's basically going to be like watching a bunch of Ted talks, hmm. um, which is also commodi commodi commoditized, right? Like you can watch Ted talks or you can go on YouTube and like really most things you want to learn if it's just the raw data, you can learn it somewhere for free or almost free if you're willing to do the the research and look for it, right? But it's yeah. the the uh, the one on one attention and like the community around that and the connection that I think adds value. And so there's ways to do that. Whereas you were that was really 
really your selling point before was like, you're going to meet people at this event that you can actually connect with after the, after this is over. It's not just going to be a weekend. You're never going to see any of these people again because they live in wherever else. Yeah. Um, that can still carry carry over online. Um, Folk Alliance did a whole bunch of stuff that was, that really blew my mind as far as, um, building community outside of just the main sessions. Hmm. And, uh, and that made me just a huge fan of, it was, it was, I went to a few online events this year, but that was by far the best one. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that there's lots of opportunity and, and, um, uh, it's, it's just the way that you approach that. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, thank you for sharing some of your thoughts on the way that people can learn some things or, or model some things that are happening in the music industry. I, I think it's, uh, it's something that we should be doing as entrepreneurs all the time is looking at other industries and seeing if there's anything that we can beg, borrow, or steal basically from in terms of yeah. ideas and approaches and, and business models and so on, because there's a lot of things that can be done. I, I mean, the, the fact that you are giving away your best content, uh, the, the, your whole album, right, is playing homage to basically the way that um, marketing uh, content marketing has really been going for many years now or, or recent years in which, you know, the, the, the general consensus there, uh, and this is something that we preach with our clients is you, you need to give away the best content you have, uh, to get people to come visit your site for more. Um, and then you can establish that thought leadership position and which allows you then to be able to sell whatever it is that you're selling and a lot easier because you've developed relationships and people, uh, you know, know, love and respect, you know, uh, and it's the same thing. So you've taken that approach from a content marketing, um, you know, a key feature or key idea, and you're applying it now to your music, which, you know, it, it would have been unheard of. Or, or almost, I mean, I've heard, heard of other cases of this before where people give away albums, but it's very, very rare, right? Um, but you've built around a, a mechanism where you're going to try to monetize that activity by giving away your, your, your best material. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, they will, there will definitely be opportunity to give me money at some point in that process. So yeah. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about that part, but yeah, it's, yeah. you're, you're totally right. And it's, I mean, it's, um, that's one example of something I've been, I've been going through some marketing training this year myself, and it's a pretty much a stolen idea. So, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so now, um, you know, anybody who's listening to this, uh, and they go over to, uh, vonbeaker.com and they sign up and they end up getting that music, there's a much greater likelihood that they're going to fall in love with the, the vocals, the lyrics and everything else. And then all of a sudden they're booking you for shows in the future, the backyard tour and so on. So, um, yep. I think there's, uh, it's a really, really good, smart strategy, right? Yeah, that's the hope. I hope in, if we were to have this conversation in two months, I, I hope I would be able to say, yes, yep. it was a wonderful success. Yeah, we'll have to do a follow-up session. Right now, my cost December. per lead is, uh, is uh, you know, <laughs> making me pause, but it's, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to do a follow-up session at the end of the summer to see how yeah. we went to mature and so on. Um, and, and so I, I, again, I just want to thank you for your time today, uh, sharing some of the ideas, um, singing a song for us, which is just absolutely incredible. And for those of you out there who are interested in learning more about um, Dave and, and listen to some of his music and get in line there for that uh, backyard tour, uh, head over to vonbeaker.com and, and then uh, obviously follow you on the socials and whatnot too yeah yeah come say hi <laughs> yeah okay well thank you so much i really appreciate you taking the time today dave and uh yeah for everybody who's listening and watching today uh if you want to check out any of our past episodes head over to amplemedia.com forward slash amplify that's where you're going to see all of the archived episodes as well as all our future ones and if you know an entrepreneur who should be spotlight uh who should be uh, featured on our show uh, definitely let me know uh there is on that same url there's a little area where somebody can apply to be a guest so um, definitely uh, send them our direction and we'll have a quick conversation with them and see if we can get them on a future show. So thanks everybody. Uh, stay safe and enjoy the summer.